Hello everyone, and welcome to round two of a special tribute event to David Stubbs, who unfortunately has been suffering from terminal health for the, the past year. But this is an event to honor one of the most influential players of the original era for this game. I am Mike, known as Mikey Berger, and my co-commentator for the second day in a row, Game Draco, who was also from David's era. After round one yesterday, in which we saw Nacho, Brado, and Metallica not compete, where uh, Nacho took maximum points, putting him currently favourite for the event uh, with 11, and with a very close rival in Metallica, who's currently on 10 points. Today we see what is one of the most anticipated matches between Ace and Domre, where both could challenge for the top spot. Uh, the players will be competing in all races of the amateur circuit group of the tracks for this game, Star Wars Episode One Racer, in which they will be awarded points depending on their ranking for each track for all the competitors in the tournament. The accumulation of points over the track will determine the outright winner, which will be concluded in the final match of the series. So yeah, welcome everyone. Yeah, welcome everyone. We have now the top two players of this game currently. We have currently the reigning champion of the game in ace on the right and we have an upcoming rival who just came out of nowhere just after the tourney ended last year and dumberay on the left who's now become second only to ace right now yeah and for this first track we're starting with bunter training course where nacho uh currently uh is placed the top spot with a 137.15 and we can see we've got David's times as well listed there as a 135.6. So gives us some idea as to what the, uh, what the players will be aiming for for this first race. And I will note too that of all the players participating, these are the two players who will be the most likely to break any of David's times. Yeah, I think though, to be fair, I think something that Ace said, which was probably pretty accurate, was anyone who can beat uh, David's uh, Mongaza time should probably uh, be awarded like just the win outright. I think that's quite fair. <laughs> yeah, I agree. He was one of only two to break David's time. <laughs> okay, Dom raise off. Yeah, and Ace is now off. Quite a straightforward track. Domre losing the boost there. Get a nice sync pause here, so the two will be racing next to each other. Both of them going for this new strategy, which Ace found, and this will be... Oh, tenth of a second difference going into the first lap. In favor of Ace. Yeah. Yeah, Ace is slightly ahead, but this is really close. Dunray riding the, the walls, the sides of the walls there, quite interesting. Yeah, they're both riding the walls. This was actually found to be slightly faster than the regular path on laps one and two. Yeah, I mean on the uh, near straight as well. But Ace looks like he's pulling out a bit of a lead here. So uh, not he quite. Looks energy. like. Has... Oh, they both lost it. Yeah, Ace has used more uh, of his boost heat though. Right. Yeah. So we won't know until near the end of the race. Here we go. Final boost here. Ooh, tense. <laughs> Coming in slightly short for Ace, but still a 36.03. So he takes this first race. Jeez! Only three tenths of a second difference. And 36.032, to put things in perspective how solid that was in tourney setting, only you went faster than that tournament last year and only once. 
But yeah, going into um, what is David's uh, probably favourite track and the shortest and the very intense track in Mongaza Speedway, which uh, incidentally is also the background we're using for this uh, event. Yeah, this is um, David's best track. He was the first player in the history of this game to break the final 42nd mark a decade ago. Be we're pretty sure that will be the final second mark because one of the other great players of this game in King Bean Dip did a T8 a tool assisted run of this game and he still wasn't able to break 30, 38 seconds with it. Yeah, and the best time as well, uh, again, by Nacho from the previous match yesterday with a 41.4, so that's the uh, the time to beat. So I think probably both these players might be, uh, you know, definitely aiming for that, I would say. And this is a blinker, you'll miss a track. It takes under a minute, and it'll probably take around 41, 40 seconds with these two players, probably. Yeah, I would think that they will both be aiming for something in the 40-second region, for sure. It's like Dom's off. Uh, here we go. I hope Ace's stream hasn't crashed. Okay, here he goes. Oh no! Dumbray crashes! And both crash! That's a oh. bit of a painful start, but there's a, a lot on the line here. They want to make sure they can, you know, do the best they can. So yeah, we, we have... Death each. And they hold it together for the remaining lap. 45. Ooh, this is close. 46 for Ace. So Domare wins this round. Jeez, tiebreaker, rare early on. Just shows how easily it can go wrong on this track. Yeah, and if you're going, this is why I said why going for 39 doesn't usually happen in tournament is because of this. Did you catch Domre's time? He put in his time 45.758. And well, going into this next track, um, which is Bido's Wild Ride, and it really is a wild ride, uh, we've seen the best time given by Metallica this time from last session with a 242.3. So that's the uh, time to beat. And we see David's uh, excellent time, 239 there, his personal best. And uh, a lot of options on this track with regards to uh, which uh, you've got different route options available to you. So I'd play is just uh, doing a, a warm-up run here. You can see it's a, a longer track this time. Uh, quite a lot of hazards. Uh, I would say you could argue it's significantly harder than the two tracks we've just seen. This track's always exciting to watch, I think, in tournament. Yeah, it always is. It's just because... It's always interesting to see, do people know the right route, or do they take one of the more scenic routes, as we like to call the longer routes? So yeah, we're one each here for these two. See, so obviously the players are competing, um, you know, against each other in, in the matches, but obviously for overall, they will uh, be, the, the points might will determine the overall uh, placements at the end of the event. And Domre is off, so Ace. Here it goes, Ace. Looking clean. So oh, 
Ho, ho, ho. Ace crashes. Oh, that's uh, he uh, actually lifted off the boost there as well. I think that threw him off. Somehow he let go of the boost and it threw him off. Yeah, it, it's quite commonplace to crash that actually. That left wall there kind of sucks you up into the tunnel and uh, usually results in a death, unfortunately. So. So yeah, for the moment, Domre's favorite to win uh, this track. Fifty-five, first lap. Fifty-eight with a death. That's not bad for with a death. Yeah, Looks nice. like Ace got thrown out of a whack by that crash. Yeah, it's difficult to get your rhythm back, I think, once you've had a crash like that, because obviously all your boost timings and things are completely out of sync then, so you have to sort of try and uh, regroup, really. But it looks like they're both using the same route. 53. Going into the final lap for Domeray. Oh, Domeray crashes, and now they're about even. Let's see what happens. Now they're about even, but now Ace has taken the lead at the last second. Well, they're crashing in the most common death spots. That's one thing I would say. Definitely. And... Dom Ray just underheating a little bit there. Yeah, and also if you're wondering why they are tilting uphill, it's because it's because we found out when you tilt, you actually lose momentum. Actually, lose less momentum that way. And 244, and it looks like Dom Ray's stream froze. And 253, one was at the end. So we have 253 for Dom and 244 for Ace. So we've gone from kind of uh, one of the craziest tracks to one of the simplest ones in Aquilaris Classic, which is a pretty good one to start with, actually, if you uh, are thinking of trying this game for the first time. Uh, it's not too... nothing really that, that catches you out too much here. It's pretty straightforward. So it's just really going to be a lot of clean technique and good racing, which is going to uh, be important here. And also, it probably has a better training course than Bunta Training because it has turns which are more expected of later tracks, not just in the later parts of the amateur circuit, but also in later circuits in general. Yeah, this was a, another track uh, Metallica won yesterday with a, a very respectable 239.35. So, um, yeah, I'd say anything under 240 is, is good here. Knock had a great comment in the Twitch chat, Mike. He's the, she said, uh, the tracks are out to get people today. Yeah, we've seen a, a surprising number of deaths, actually, given the relative ease of the tracks we're playing. But uh, that's just what happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, this should be a very uh, competitive track, a little bit like um, Winter Training Course. Really. I'm expecting a similar kind of... Uh, race to that one here. Here we go. Ace is starting. <laughs> Looks like dumb stream stalled again.
well. No problems for Ace so far. I'm hoping that Dumray's uh, can stream will start working at some point. It just Are started they... working. Yeah, so no commentator's curse on that. <laughs> 53. Not bad for a first lap. And a 53 for Dom. Oh, this is really close now. But Dom wasn't able to hold the boost. That is going to hurt in this section unless he holds it this way. He doesn't. Looks like he's trying to take a more cautious line. Through the notorious uh, gate section, which uh, has drawn quite a few casualties um, over the years. Yeah. For some odd, and then once in a, in a miracle time, you can somehow go past the gate and it's a glitch. Usually you crash. Whoa! We have 52s going into it, but Dumry lost the boost from a box, so Ace is now ahead. And you yeah, can I see from... And you can see from that underheating that took from the bonk. I think he'd have lost some uh, baseline speed as well from that impact, so that will be a little bit destructive, possibly. Yeah, slightly different heat patterns here, so that could make a little bit of a difference coming up to this uh, final section of the lap. I like to call what Dumray's doing what I like to call a ketchup boost. Yeah. This is very close, actually. It's extremely close. Both 237s. And they both beat Davy, and Dumray wins in a squeaker. It's by just a hundredth of a second. Wow. Dumray wins by a hundredth of a second. Yeah, two very uh, excellent times there. Both beat David, which is pretty nuts. Yeah, David is uh, is pretty good on Aquilaris Classic, so to see it in the tournament is uh, definitely excellent. And now we're on to one of uh, Ace's favorite tracks, I believe. Uh, he, he likes Malastair tracks. This is Malastair 100. Yeah. Clone of Sonoma Raceway. Metallica currently um, has the best time for this track so far with a 147.114. Well, this is crazy. We have it tied going into the quarterfinal again. And Ace just got world record on this yesterday. He just beat his own world record yesterday. Yeah, well, he just posted a very strong time there with a, a 145.1, but I see he had a 144.3 there on his screen. Yep. This is a difficult track just to see where you're going because it's just so dark, I think. Not only that, but also when you're playing at the uh, lowest of the low frame rate and traction, you have really greasy handling. Yeah, I think I think that's a good description of the uh, handling of the pod, yeah. I mean, some pods uh, naturally have very low traction anyway, so like if uh, we, we often say, we refer to like Bowles, I think has one of the lowest, if not the lowest traction, I think, of any pod. And Dome Ray's starting, and now Ace is starting. A good start from Dom, right? Good start from Ace 2. And it looks like Dom Ray's stream froze. And... Yep, 
Here we go. Very clean hairpin by Ace. Yeah, very nice. He took it quite safe, actually, on that first lap, I thought, apart from, well, in the majority. Looks like Dumbray might have took a bonk in the hairpin, given it was a 40 versus a 35. Well, 40 is a significant difference, I think. Maybe, maybe he had a crash, we didn't see it. Possibly, yeah. Won't know until then. Um... Here we go. Another clean hairpin by Ace. Yeah, both 35 the... again. Thirty-five. Yeah, so uh, unless anything dramatic happens, Ace should uh, should win this. Yeah, this section he's using the uh, left section on the track, which is a little bit quicker. Whoa, Ace caught fire! Oof, we can repair this for the end of the race. Uh, 146 for Ace. If he didn't catch fire, he probably would have hit 145. Yeah, definitely. And a one four Death hairpin one, just as you said, eh? just as you said, Mike. <laughs> well, here we go. 302 or bust. Both are going to go for broke on vengeance. And if you're wondering why they said that, both of these players are the top two players on Vengeance at the moment, and they even were battling out for the world record just as recently. Yeah, well, they certainly have the best two listed times that are recognized, yeah. Obviously, trying to do those times in the tournament, though, is uh, rather a different challenge. Yeah, but but basically they but basically it looks like they're gonna go for broke like they did on Bunta and Bunta Mangias and Vengeance. Yeah, well Nacho has the best time here uh, from the last match with a, a death surprisingly with a three hundred eight point seven. And I know Ace even got three hundred five in the tournament last year with a death. And to uh, put things in perspective on how much this track has evolved over the years, when we started back in the day, the world record holder was Wooter Jansen with a 326 with Ben. And I remember breaking that time, not with Ben Quadanaros, but Bullseye Navoir, who's much slower than Ben. Yeah, I remember looking at some of my times as well. I, I, I remember coming across it, I think it was 320 that I, I saw, but that was just with Ben's pod, I think. I don't think I'd use Bullseye there. But I know that Wooter used to use um, Bullseye's pod for a lot of tracks until we found that Ben was actually quicker there. All but Gravine, Gateway, and Fire Mountain Rally, where Bullseye is still faster than Ben because of his sheer agility. Yeah, we just has uh, yeah higher cornering speeds really, so it's um, yeah it definitely helps on those more twisty tracks. But yeah, they're uh, warming up for what you can see is probably the most crazy track for the amateur circuits, I would argue. Definitely, I would agree. Yeah, it's dark, it's dangerous, and we've got these infamous Uvo tubes, which uh, Ace will be coming up to shortly. So your pod kind of like hovers in the middle of the tube and you have to try and maneuver around the obstacles so it's like a kind of like a gravitational force the experience that pulls you towards the center of the tube yeah particularly at higher frame rates which is what they're running at because at um, lower frame rates like i play on the 64 you just careen all over the place in them yeah you don't want to like rotate the pod or anything as you go into those it can be kind of a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing yeah i like to say tilting in the ubu tubes at low frame rates is certain death yeah if you know the 
if you can learn like the pattern with the rocks and things, you can avoid them. That's one thing that uh, you know experienced players will uh, have an advantage over. Uh, less experienced. Yes, agree. And both players are ready. So it looks like they're also the streams are ready, so we can give the countdown. Oops, scores need to be updated. It's four two. Yeah, Ace won the first race. Um he won probably... Ace won Bunta. Uh Dom won Mongaza. Ace won Beta's Wild Ride. Ace won Beta's Wild Ride and and uh Dom Ray won Aquarius Classic and Ace won Metal Star 100. Yes. So here we go. And it looks like both players are going to go for broke on this. Yeah, it seems like it could be a bit risky, but we'll we'll see. Yeah. Buckle up. This one is going to hurt. Well, I think probably the most of the toy section will be the the slot boost you can do which after the end of the uh outside segment um you go down a ramp and then you go to like a very tight figure eight corner and there's a very tiny slot which you can just about boost through but it's extremely dangerous ace is off Dome Ray's off. Here we go. Oh, and we're pausing, and they're gonna go for this slot boost. Neither one is. They're taking it safe. Yeah, I had a feeling they might do that. <laughs> Let's avoid the energy binder. So into the tube section, which uh, is... You get an additional 200 units of speed, I believe? Yeah, it's an additional 200. And a 102 first lap from both, a hundredth of a second off. Yeah, actually, it was eight hundredths of a... Actually, it was... Yeah, two pretty excellent first laps. Very similar uh, boost patterns as well. Sure they're under heat. I think Domray might. Neither, it's pretty very quiet. slight. Neither one is underheating that much. Yeah, they're if they keep it the clean. same heat. Well, I say if they keep 101. it. 101! 101 for the going into the final lap. Yeah, this is definitely extreme. Oh, Ace! Domray held. That boost fling the whole way while well, Ace did not. Now he's slightly ahead. But will that. Whoa! Hit the cog shaft. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, actually. That was extremely close race to that point. But um, if Ace can keep it clean, it'll give us an idea as to uh, what kind of pace they're both on here. So they need to try and use as much heat as they can up to the line from the engines to get the most out of this final section. And Ace has a 304. He beat Davey. And 308 with a death. That is not bad at all. 
Yeah, it's very similar to Nacho's time, actually. Yeah, that was about very similar to Nacho. And here we go, the final track, Spice Mine Run, and Ace is now at 4-2. Yeah, I should probably mention Nacho got a 308.7, so Don Moray has just topped his, uh, the place, just topped the top spot by two hundredths of a second. If it weren't for Ace with a 304. Yeah, so he's sitting in second position right now on that track. And the time to beat for the final track is a 342.225 by Nacho. And that was his personal best. I know both players can do it, but it's going to result in... But this is going to result in having to go to the brink. And as yep. I said before in the match previously, Spice Mine Run is a track that's deceptively easy. Yeah, for you, for a long track, you mean, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Ace will be trying to aim for something around about the 340 mark. Yeah, I think actually you experience more deaths on this track than than you would, you'd think. Just, uh, well, a lot because of this, this final section, these corners are very... They just stick out so much. They have like one point for the apex, and if you hit it, that's it, basically. So it's... You know, there, and there is, of course, the, the issue with the bulldozer, which we mentioned um, in the last match as well. Which Ace is just, uh, well, you won't see it on his lap, but on the final lap, it becomes a, a potentially a very serious uh, threat if you're on a, a very good pace, because it, it moves uh, depending on where you are on the track and what time. Yeah, this track's definitely about accuracy and um, about managing your boost as efficiently as you possibly can. And particularly in the final section of the, the last lap where it becomes critical, you can uh, use as much of it as you, you can before the end of the final lap. That seems to be probably what's most critical uh, to the, the final lap of this race. Spice Mine Run is 344 at 343, and and Davy has a 343.914. So, if they dodge the dozer on the final lap, they could probably do it. Yeah, I I agree, Darkray. It's definitely uh, very nice of Game Draco to remind me of my uh, uh, how I lost the grand final last year. <laughs> <laughs> it just remind it was just so memorable particularly with the 10 second sync pause and then all the way and then followed by a death it was just so spectacular and I gave like a Obi-Wan scream like Qui-Gon did I was like no and yeah, both can, of them I, have started I can see no one's going to allow me to forget that in a hurry <laughs> We've got a sync pause, but it's uh, not before the bulldozer. A little bit of a scrape from Ace there on the first lap. So going up this escalator, which increases your speed, which makes perfect sense with regards to physics. through the downhill section with the dangerous kill spot. Ace is in the lead slightly because he underheat because Dumray underheated a little bit on that escalator followed by that spook beast. He didn't floor it at the spike like Ace did. I'm guessing like a 114, 15. Both 115, and it's about a hundred, about tenth of a second. Yeah, 
And Domre uh, boosting earlier than Ace there. Here we go. Yeah, so I think Domre's boosted two more times, two additional times more than Ace has, I think. Yeah, and also he's boosting slightly later. Ooh, Domre nearly dodged the minecart. Yeah, the hitboxes on some of these objects are a lot bigger than they appear. That's something else you learn as well if, if you play this game. I think the one that the most notorious one that stands out to me is the, the one on the jump on the uh, Bunter Classic uh, on the first corner. Tenth of a second difference going into the final lap. Yeah, it's very close. I think Ace is ever so slightly ahead at this point. Both miss the dozer. Oh, Ace caught fire. You can see how Dom's firing the booster a little later than Ace. He's not quite as confident as firing at the spike of the speed as Ace is. Yeah, and then this final section will be the most important of all the three laps, which we're seeing in now. So they're going to... Because you just have to floor the boost. Yeah, through this section, which obviously they don't do on laps one and two, so it's more difficult in a way. and you floor it even with no upgrades. Yeah, Here we like go. And both pretty good heat though, so it's gonna be very close this. Jesus, it's three, three hundredths of a second. In favor of Domre. But sadly, that is not enough to win the match after that loss in Vengeance, but my god, that was a Kings of the Road match if we ever saw it. Yeah, it doesn't really get much closer than this, really. I mean, we've seen several races there uh, within just tenths of seconds, so... Yeah, can't really Okay, ask it looks like both are open to interviews. Hey, Ace! Well, hello there. Hey, Dom! Yo, GG Ace. Yeah, GG's, man. That was some crazy matches. We had <laughs> Boot the Training, Spice Mine Run, and Aquarius Classic coming down to tenths, if not hundredths of a second. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Had a few more deaths than I would have liked, but hey, overall, took three games off the best. Can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious where where we stand compared to Nacho now. Yeah, it's a little sketch. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. Um, if, if needs be, I'll I'll um, post the results uh, immediately after. But obviously, when we do the final results, we'll have to come up with some sort of system where uh, uh, you know we can announce the results immediately because they'll just have to be added up the scores. But um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that you're winning the uh, event at the moment, Ace. Well, at the moment, I'm I'm definitely first, yeah, but I think that will change when you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably like you going to take us. Oh, my word. <laughs> but there was some... Was uh, there were some very intense uh, races there. I mean, obviously, that last race, you know, goes without saying, but, I mean, Aquilaris Classic as well, you know, two very excellent times. We both posted a, uh, a 2.37, which was... Uh, Close to the tournament record, I believe, from last year, if memory serves. Yeah, that, that was pretty nice, definitely. Yeah. Always good I, to see I, close races. I overheated a little early before that last figure eight, so I lost some time, so it would have been a little bit less stressful when I looked at the times if that hadn't happened. <laughs> How did you find uh, Mongaza Speedway? Because you both uh, took a death there, but... Um, I had a better time death, that's all it was, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I crashed immediately. I literally went into the first corner. Ow, 
Ouch! That's like the worst! Yeah. I died on the last corner of the first lap, so I was at at least decent heat compared to his. Yeah, I had zero. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that, that's what happens when you start overthinking. When you're like, okay, okay, do I go safe now for the first turn, or do I just do what I usually do? Okay, let's go safe. Okay, yeah. no. <laughs> same happened on uh, Beatles, by the way. I was like, okay, I'll just cancel the boost in the tunnel, so that particular death doesn't doesn't happen to me, and then it happened to me because I went safe. It happens all the time. Don't go safe. Just do what you used. To. <laughs> Bro, yeah, I died twice in Beatles, and one of those times was to the stupid, like, hill bounce into the rock right before the tunnel. I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Last time was kind of my fault, though. I, I just tried to eke out a little bit more boost at the end and hit a rock, so... Yeah, you were very much trading places in that race, really, so it was, uh, it made for quite an exciting race, that one. <laughs> Well, at least it was some good races. Can't, and I'm happy that I got the first tournament up the way. Ah! Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of this event and then obviously also to the to the big annual tournament. Oh yeah. Um yeah, I hope I hope to see many more close races this year. Tournament season has just started, so yeah, this is a kind of a, a nice uh, starter event, really, for all the, all of our competitors in in the event, just to get a feel. And I think also for a lot of the new new people, you know, new guys who are, you know, uh, yet to do anything, it's a very good way of kind of introducing players to uh, tournament settings, really. Yeah, for sure, I agree. And of course, we get to play tribute to, uh, you know, a great uh, player of the past, really, and that of David Stubbs. So. Uh, it's kind of a double whammy, really. Yeah, oh, David's a legend this... of this game, for sure. No, I would agree. And this also felt like a double whammy, too, because it felt like the commentators were, like, the top two from our era, and you were are the top two today. It certainly was kind of a contrast of the old versus the new guard, if you will. <laughs> yeah, that's why, I, that's why I had to do it today. It just felt so cool to do old guard versus new guard today. Also, I yeah. suggested this in chat yesterday, but I think if anyone manages to beat David's MGS time in the <laughs> tournament, they should flat out just win that's, the tournament. Yeah, it's an auto win right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, this I, time uh, is so good. It's so good. It's yeah. I, I mentioned that actually during the the match. There was one particular time of David's, which is uh, you know, well, well, I think without doubt, really his best uh, his best time. So yeah, it's incredible. Truly, it's a whole more than three tenths better than my PB. <laughs> I know that he put many, many hours into that time, even you know years ago. It's just something he's uh, been ongoing. I mean, if I had to guess, I would say he's probably done in the region of uh, say twenty-five thousand laps for Mongaza Speedway, you know, comfortably. So you can yeah. tell when you watch this PB for sure. Yeah, but definitely uh, thanks to everyone today for uh, you know helping run a great event. Um, you know, thanks to our our competitors for a fantastic match, and for, with my co-commentator as well, Game Draker. Yeah, and of thank course, you guys as well. yeah, thank you for hosting it. Feels good to have you pay tribute to you David. too. Yes. Good luck. Good luck, everyone. May the force be with you.